Hey everyone and welcome to the second episode of my EV3 YouTube series. In the first episode, we went over the main components of EV3. In the second one, we are going to create our first robot, Snowy. Since this is our first build, we are going to make it extremely simple and I'm going to provide some important points about building such similar robots. And so let's get right into it. For Snowy, we need the following parts. EV3 brick, large motors, beams, pins, axles, bushes, connectors and the infrared sensor. So first of all we start by joining the two large motors. For this we will need the blue pins which will be attached to the pegs on the underside of the large motors. These will further be connected to the square frame joining the two large motors. The same arrangement has to be done on both the motors. However, a few more steps have to be taken in order to strengthen the connection between the two motors. The first attachment to this module is a square frame. This will be added to the front of the previous one using black pins. This will later be used while joining the wheels of the robot. After that, we take a third square frame. This one is connected to the pegs at the top of the large motors by again using black pins. This step not only strengthens the connections between the two motors but also gives us empty pegs for further connections. After this step is done, the motors should be quite well connected. Then we take two H connectors. These are attached to the back of the large motor. An 11 length beam is taken in order to connect these two H connectors together. We also add two black pins to the outer pegs of the H connectors while connecting the blue pins to the inner pegs. These pins will later become useful while connecting the brick. Another 11th length beam is taken to connect these four pins together. This completes our large motor module. The next attachment involves an L beam. Two black pins and one axle pin are connected to the pegs on the underside of these large motors. These L beam is then connected to these pegs. The same attachment is done on the other side as well. This will later become useful while connecting the rear wheels of the robot. This is one of the easiest and most stable ways of connecting the rear wheels as it uses the pegs already provided by the large motor. After that, the front wheels are taken and two black pins are connected on the pegs available on the wheels. These are then connected to a 7 length beam joining them. Then an 8 length axle is taken. First, a gear is passed through the axle as a washer, followed by the wheel module. So you might be wondering why I did not just directly connect the axle to the motor. This is because the extra beam prevents the axle from bending while the wheels are spinning for a long time. After the wheel module is built, it is connected to the motor. A bush is connected to the other end of the axle. Then the same attachment is done on the other side as well. Now that both the wheels are connected, we have a fairly good vehicle type shape but a vehicle usually has four wheels and our bot only has two. To fulfill this requirement, these small wheels are attached to the backside of our robot. They allow the robot to turn and move more easily. Two of these wheels are attached to the L-beam on each side connected to the pale colored three length frictionless pin. Now you see that the motor can kind of move like a regular vehicle, but there is one problem. When it starts to move, the rear portion of the robot lifts off the ground. This is because there is no weight near the back of the robot. To remedy this, we need to attach the brick which will provide the required weight. So how do we attach the brick? Firstly, four black pins are connected to this beam like so. After that, we take another 11th length beam and connect it to this square frame using bush pins. Why are we using bush pins? Well, most of the weight of the brick is going to fall on these two 11 length beams. Thus, they need to be as stable as possible, which is why we are using bush pins over regular black pins. Then, we attach two L beams by putting black pins into the first and fourth pegs. The L beam attachment has to be replicated for both sides. These beams will later form the quote unquote hands of our robot. Finally, we take the brick. We connect two H connectors to the brick like so. Make sure to attach them on the side of the brick where the charging port is located. 
you will see that when we connect this brick to the L beams, these pins at the back will also get in line with the brick. Now this is starting to look like a fully fledged robot. You can see the rear part of the robot no longer jumps when we start to move it as now there is weight to support it. For the last section of this build, let us attach the infrared sensor to the robot. Firstly, an L-beam is connected on either side of the robot using two black pins. These L-beams will hold up the infrared sensor module once we attach it. Then, we take three five-length beams and connect them to each other like so. Pay close attention to the position of the pins. This attachment uses one blue pin and four black pins for connecting these three beams. Then we will connect these beams to the L beams we just attached. This is used for attaching the L beams to the infrared sensor and allows the sensor to be aligned to the center of the robot. Then we will take these connectors and attach them to the infrared sensor. These connectors are made by joining two separate connectors using the two length axle. We will use blue pins for this connection. We are using these connectors instead of just using the pegs on the sensor because this gives us more spaces for the connections. Put black pins on the open ends of these connectors and attach them to these beams. So this is what we have built so far. Then we have to re replicate the last attachment on the other side as well. After that, the robot is done. So this is the finished robot I showed you all at the end of the last video. So we just created our first robot in a matter of 10 minutes. Anyways, that is where I will end the episode for today. I hope you found the video interesting. Thanks for watching. Bye. So Snowy is now ready to rumble. In the next episode, we are going to dive into the basics of EV3 programming for the very first time. And this is the interface of the EV3 programming software LabVIEW. Get used to seeing this screen a lot as it is probably the aspect of EV3 I know the most about. I know there's a lot to take in here but we will go over some of that in the next episode. Hope you all are excited. See you in the next one. Bye.